I've often wondered why it is that when students begin to learn to strum a guitar, they're actually being taught to do it the wrong way. Let's talk about that after this. So if you think about it for a moment, I think you would agree that the most frequent activity that's done on a guitar, especially for starting students, intermediates, but throughout anyone's career on the guitar, that strumming is probably one of the most popular activities that's done on the instrument, aside from uh, lead guitar, solo guitar, that sort of thing. It's very common. And yet, the way it gets taught from the very beginning is to mimic strum patterns that other people show you. Now, I've said it many times in the past, I'll continue to say it as I move through uh, my angle on strumming. There's nothing wrong with that approach at the very beginning of learning how to play. You need something to get you going. But for far too long after that, the same habit of basically waiting for someone to show you how to strum something continues. And it's, it's just washing away your own creative instincts. So I think it's being done wrong. And over the next three videos or so, I want to briefly explore this idea with you and hopefully get you on board um, to, uh, to better understand how strumming should work as opposed to just mimicking what other people are doing. I want you to start thinking about how to use your ear to listen to a piece of music and then pull some info from it and turn that information into a viable strumming solution for you. So that's what we're going to look at in this video and the, the, the basic, most critical aspect of this whole new approach. Well, it's not a new approach, it's my approach, um, and it is a more musical approach, um, is to pay attention to something that I've always referred to as the pulse, you know, the heartbeat of a song. That thing that gets the crowd clapping and moving their body and tapping their foot. <clears throat> Whatever it is they're perceiving as they listen to a piece of music, we need to do the same thing. It's odd that guitarists, my guitar is right over here, uh, often get so caught up in the mechanics of playing, it's kind of like their ears shut down. And I get it, there's a lot technically, mechanically, that you have to learn. But we, we should never shut these down. These things are your best friend when it comes to learning any instrument, let alone guitar. So what I'm going to do uh, is uh, I have a backing track here uh, and I just want you to take a, a brief listen to it and we're going to use this backing track over the next few videos to highlight this approach to strumming, the approach of learning to listen for specific information in the song and apply it towards strumming. So let's just take a listen first to the backing track. We won't have the whole thing because it's about three minutes long. And, um, and I'll come back and I'm going to begin to play along with it in some manner according to the pulse. And I'll explain that in a moment. So let's take a listen here, see what this sounds like. You see, I'm already doing this. Okay, 
we can stop there for now. So as I'm listening, you can see me, I'm just shuffling like this, maybe I'm bobbing my head. What you don't see me doing is I'm actually tapping my foot as well. And when people see that from you, they just think you're having a good time. They, you know, you're just into the music, so to speak. Fair enough, you are. But let's use that information, that natural inclination to move in some consistent, uh, predictable fashion, generally from start to finish as the song plays its way out. It, it might help to um, give you some metaphors as to why this approach is so important to me and why I think it's a better approach to help people learn how to strum. If you're being given a strum pattern, and let's assume for the time being that you have been playing for a period of time, you've got a few songs already under your control because somebody showed you a way to strum it, them, um, but now it's time to leave that and get on to the real business of what strumming is all about. That's kind of where we're at. Um, so think of it in terms of training wheels on a bike. I've used this analogy many times. When you put training wheels on a bike, your intention is, or you, as a parent, is to help your child get accustomed to being on the bike and assume to learn to ride it. If you think about this for a second, what is the actual skill that's needed to learn to ride a bike? Sorry for the email. What's the actual skill? It's balance. Are training wheels helping you learn balance? Nope. But they do make it look like you're riding the bike. And that's the same idea with strum patterns. It makes you look like kind of you know what you're doing when you're hitting the strings of the guitar to all the chords of the song. And if you do, that's great. I mean, that's not a problem. But a lot of students don't. They just repeat, kind of like robots, sorry guys, um, what the pattern is. And they may, if they're lucky, have three of these patterns that they kind of accumulate over time. And their game becomes, when they want to learn a new tune, which pattern will I choose to stick on top of the song? And that's totally not the way to do it. You have to get away from that approach. Or you could think of it in terms of um, paint by numbers. If you do painting by numbers, where you're being told what color to put into what spot, and you just continue that process uh, until you have a, a nice, beautiful painting that you can hang up and be proud of. But if you think about it, what are the real skills that you need for painting? You need some sense of composition, some sense of color mixing, some sense of how to let the brush move across the surface, whether it's canvas or what have you. Um, all of these things you're not getting access to. So just like training wheels trick you in a sense into thinking you know how to ride a bike, paint by numbers is kind of tricking you into thinking you know how to paint a picture. When in fact neither the training wheels or the paint by numbers ever gave you access to the real skills that you need. This is what I want to dig into over these next few videos. So this thing that I was doing, <clears throat> I refer to it as the pulse. There's a lot to be talked about in terms of how different people will interpret this. And I'll, I can get into that in later videos. But for the time being, that's where my musical brain is placing me when I listen to the songs. Take a just at the beginning here. See, I'm already feeling that. I could do this throughout the whole tune, which is me, you know, bobbing my head, moving my body, tapping my foot, fist pump in the audience, whatever it might be. That's the pulse. I want you to start to learn to perceive that in the music you listen to. 
it's not always evident and it can take some time depending on the nature of music you want to play to get a good handle on it but for the vast majority it's pretty straightforward you listen to a popular tune in rock or blues or country or folk you're, you're going to perceive this quality in the music so step one that I like to get students to do when they're trying to learn a song is not to worry about how to strum it per se but to be able to strum it along with that pulse and usually necessarily you're going to have to make some rhythm adjustments uh, or you're going to hear these rhythm adjustments in your strumming as they won't necessarily always line up in a cool way to the song you're listening to but we will get there this exercise is more of a test of can you identify that pulse and let's assume you know how to play all the chords to the song and you have no trouble changing from one chord to the other. All of that's done. Your job is simply to strum steadily and productively, not productively, predictably to that pulse. Uh, if you want the sequence of the chords for this backing track and indeed the backing track, if you want to get that uh, for free, uh, just uh, Give me your best email and uh, we'll make sure that that all um, is made available to you and you can take care of all of that down in the notes underneath this video. It'll send you to a, a page where you can just sign up and get that stuff for free. Um, so I'm going to cue it up again or maybe I'm just going to start yeah, right from there and I'm going to play along to that pulse that I perceive. It's a nice fancy chord. This is all introduction right now. I'm not worried about this stuff. Play, play, pulse. goes on for another minute and a half or whatever the case may be. That simple act of perceiving the pulse in a piece of music, you know, again, it's that thing, or it's the foot tapping or whatever you want to call it. I call it the pulse. Yes, some people call it the beat. I prefer the word pulse. And we'll talk about that some other time. Um, your ability to strum just that nothing else. It's not an interesting strumming <laughs> pattern, if you want to call it that. It's, I call them strumming solutions. It's not interesting, but it is revealing because if you can't do that, even if somebody shows you how to do a strum, oh sorry, shows you how to do a strum pattern, you may have a hard time keeping at it in a repeatable fashion. 
because it just naturally wants to speed up or sometimes less often slow down or whatever the case may be. So your ability just to stay with that pulse throughout the song is step number one. You've got to be able to do that. That's simple. Now, it might take some rehearsing, it might take whatever to, to get better at it, but you should get better at it. And all you're doing is strumming along to that natural, um, instinctive thing that you would react to if you were at a concert listening to that song, loving it, let's pretend, and you're just, you're so into it, you feel that pulse. You might even see the whole audience clapping to it because they love the song so much. That's not the case. It's, it's a backing track. <laughs> but let's pretend they love it so much. You see it and you feel it, even though in some sense, you're not actually hearing all of that pulse overtly in the band. It, it's... It's being communicated to you in subtle ways. But you're picking up on it, is my point. You are totally, totally wired to pick up on this. And if it's new to you, it might take a little bit more listening before that natural quality starts to emerge. But it's definitely there. I often refer to it as a sleeping giant. So that's what I want you to think about in this video, is just to get an idea of how to perceive that pulse to a song, any song you're listening to, not classical. We'll leave that out for the time being. Um, even in jazz, if you're into jazz, there's a pulse to it. But most students are kind of more in the, the uh, rock, uh, country, folk uh, kind of genre. Uh, you should be able to pull out that pulse once you know the chords to the tune and strum along to the whole thing unbroken, start to finish. Know that it's a stepping stone towards something cooler. It's not the end product. If you found this idea helpful and useful or you're intrigued by the idea, I would invite you, and I've got the link below the video here, to uh, explore the membership site that I have on uh, available through um, Guitar Evolutions. It's called the uh, Strum Hub membership. And we go into this stuff really deep. This is an ongoing site that will, it's a new site, but it is growing and we'll be building more and more uh, content around this principle of learning how to strum, which is how the pros do it. They just don't talk about it very much because they've, they're doing it so naturally now, they don't even think about it. <clears throat> uh, if you want the uh, 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 actual backing track and a list uh, layout of the chords as well, again, you can use the link below and uh, that'll send you to a page where you can sign up to my site. And I'm happy to send you that material free for you to uh, work on it and kind of get used to it. In the second video, coming up, uh, we will be exploring uh, a slightly more complex version of the pulse. Um, and then in the third video, we will go even one step more in complexity. But we're going to take it stepwise as we go through. So I hope you enjoyed that. Looking forward to seeing you on the second video. Until then, Steve Dempster from Guitar Evolutions. Talk to you soon. Bye.